everybody, welcome to this playthrough for Rookie Division for the Community Cup in Golf Clash the game. The video is sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic. And before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also visit golfclashtommy.com for more Golf Clash related content. Get the best guides on the market, the ultimate tournament text guides by becoming a subscriber on Patreon. Those will uh, for sure help you out in your tournament journey. Last but not least, go and join our Discord. There you can interact directly with me. You can also interact with other players in the game to help you out in our specific forums. Link to Discord and to Patreon is in the description down below. Community Cup is a, it's a tournament where we have been choosing the holes. And we have been choosing holes that we can score very low. So in the end we do have hole number 2 and hole number 8 where we can go for green. Which is going to be must eagles and you will see how you should do that here in this playthrough. You have a good chance on every other hole I would say as well with a big shout out to hole number 9. Which is a very interesting hole to get an albatross on. In the end I would consider this to be a, a course that you shoot a minus 14 if you're gonna have anything to do uh, with winning the tournament, meaning on 9 holes, so minus 28 on 18 holes. I do think you need to get lower, honestly. But this playthrough will help out. Make sure you comment in the comment section below if you do have any questions. In the end, let's focus, let's go to hole number 1 and good luck. For hole number one, we're going to play with the backbone here, so a long iron. So the thing that we're looking for is to bounce on the fairway and go towards the pin. You can see there that I was stretching out looking for a rough bump opportunity there, but, 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 the thing with the rough bump is that it does require a decent level sniper, it does require at least a side spin two ball, and I want to try to limit ourselves to play with, you know, lower level balls. And obviously in the end, if you're looking for that rough bump, then do not hesitate to give it a try. But you need to have something else in mind. With a bad great right, you will most likely not clip the rough. And you are then going to bounce over the green into the sand. Then you might be having a difficult time making a birdie or for that matter obviously and hole in one. One and a half bar top spin, putting our club into absolute max distance. Maximum distance with a 30% over adjustment with our backbone and then we're going to be close here on hole number one. For hole number two, we're going to play a par four which is played more or less like a par three. We're going to give ourselves the horizon and the big topper and here you can see me going back and forth back and forth not really finding the spot here i would like you to make a decision here either you play with a power zero ball and you play with the big topper the problem with that type of setup is that you need to go with under power not much but a little bit of under power is needed otherwise you choose to play like for the second option you choose to play with the horizon and the horizon is then going to be played with a power 2 ball minimum. And the reason we need a power 2 ball is that we do need more distance when it comes to playing with the horizon. So we can reach further in front with our target. But the plan is to bounce through the trees here, getting it into the rough rollout on the fairway. And from here, we're going to have no problem getting an eagle here from distance. So, once again, you have a decision to make. And... It's going to either be a big topper, power zero ball, or it's going to be the horizon and a power two ball plus. And I would lean towards the horizon because in the end it's harder to underpower than taking a normal shot. No elevation whatsoever, so you just adjust what you are used to do. But this is going to be a must eagle to make, otherwise you're going to struggle being in top of this tournament. For hole number three, we're going to start by playing with the driver that gives us the most distance combined with the most topspin possible. In our 
bag we're going to play them with an extra mile. You can see here that if you do want to play aggressive you can go directly over the rough by using overpower. But as we do try to stay away from using overpower then the, we are going to bounce before the rough instead. 4.5 bar top spin and I'm also using 2.5 bar side spin to the right and a power 0 ball. Once again even though it's a par 5 we're playing with a lower level type of ball. So we can save the rest you know and still do well no elevation whatsoever here so it's a simple drive straightforward bounce on the fairway over the rough and try to gain as much distance as possible and here obviously for those of you that do want to be more advanced you can note down the yardage number because that's going to help you adjust for the second shot second shot we're going to play with the guardian and the guardian has to be in not has to, can be in whatever level you might have. The important part though is that we do try to use as much backspin as possible and then aim for the ball to go up on the top green, top of the green and then fall back down towards the pin. When you do have a short drive like we had then it's not wrong to after your adjustment to push up a ring or two to make sure that you really get up on that hill so you don't fall short in line. And in the end, you use you want to aim for the left side of that type of green on the top there because it slopes slightly down to the right. 10% over adjustment for the second shot. Short, second shot. <laughs> and you can see there that if we do make sure that we are aiming, the, like uh, deliberately aiming so the ball go uh, far enough up on the green, we're gonna not fall short. So it's very, very important. And this is going to be a tricky one, but a little opportunity for an albatross. For hole number four, we're going to play with a sniper or a viper. If you do have the sniper in level four plus, you play sniper. Otherwise, you choose the viper as it's a similar club than the sniper, but obviously a, a bit a bit worse than the sniper I would say because we're looking for a good ball guideline we're looking for good accuracy and here I'm using one side spin to the right and we're aiming for the ball to bounce on the fairway and then over and roll towards the pin you're going to see that I'm going to have the wrong spin adjustment here and the thing that I would like you to change to is to remove the side spin to the right and actually go with one bar of backspin only still the same type of aiming point so that that will still be the same as in the video 10% over adjustment and I want you to play max distance numbers even though we are in mid distance of our club so max distance numbers one bar of backspin sniper if it is level four or uh, or better and otherwise you do play with the viper For hole number 5 you're going to see me be very very tempted to go full blast on the right hand side but I do change my mind and the reason I do change my mind in the end is because we don't really have the top spin to crawl over the rough there. We do risk too much because if I do hit great left I'm going to go into the sand. If I do hit great right I'm going to get stuck in the rough on the top right so I kind of need to hit perfect on that drive if I'm gonna play aggressive sure for those of you playing with more superior drivers like an extra mile 8 plus or maybe you play with a Thor Sammer level 5 plus then you can play a drive like that very aggressive and then you're gonna be in a much better position for the second shot obviously but the thing that we're gonna focus on here is an alternative route for those of us playing with lower level drivers and lower level balls no spin whatsoever 10% over adjustment and we want the ball to just get over the rough here and then we're gonna leave ourselves up in 354 yard mark. Second shot is going to be with the backbone and the reason I use the backbone is due to its backspin. I want to have at least four bars of backspin approaching the pin. If you don't have a backbone with four bars of backspin, you choose the other long iron that does have four bars backspin, which could be a lower level Saturn or it could also be, you know, uh, a high level Goliath. You know, there's different options, but the backbone would be the first one that I would go to. Now we aim for the right side of the pin as you can probably see there in the beginning when we started with the adjustment but we you know we don't do that we aim for the pin don't try to aim for the right side of the pin because then we're gonna miss on the right side 10% over adjustment and max distance numbers and if we would be aiming directly for the pin that would have been super duper close getting it in the hole for a nice eagle on a tough par 4.
For all the mistakes, we're going to start by playing with the driver that do give us the most distance, which in our bag is going to be the extra mile level 5. It could be a different one when it comes to uh, what you have in your bag to select from. I'm using only 3, 3.5 three bar topspin here because I do not want to go long, but I forget one thing, that is that I only play with a power zero ball. So 4.5 bar topspin it is that I want you to play with no matter what. Side spin, max side spin to the right, then we just take a normal shot, getting ourselves down on the fairway, leaving ourselves up for a sniper rough bump. The reason I do suggest three types of ball in the info box on the right hand side is due to the fact that we don't want to go in between clubs. So for to make it easier for us for the second shot is to choose a power one or maybe even a power two ball if you do have a tendency to misadjust. Uh, from time to time and, and stuff like that. So you do not get to be this dangerously close being in between clubs. Now we are in absolute max distance and we are aiming directly for the pin. Have in mind that when you adjust for a rough bump like this, you do not have a fully developed ball guideline if you do not have a sniper level, at least level 7, level 8 to approach the pin. With a sniper level 4 we only have a 4.0 ball guideline and that's the reason we're coming in too hot because in the end we aim for the pin but we have more ball guideline to account for so we need to back up a little bit and aim that one more properly. 10% over adjustment for the drive. Second shot is going to be played uphill which means that the ball is less affected by the wind than normal so minus 20% for the second shot. Decent chance for an albatross. For the last part 3 here in the rookie division, we are going to play with the backbone and a mauling ball. So once again, we are sticking towards a mauling ball and still going to give ourselves a very nice chance for an hole in one here. This is a very bumpy fairway though, so try to find a spot where you see that you have a pretty firm ball guideline. So you don't like move a little bit, bit back, uh, left and right, left and right, left and right to see that the ball guideline actually follows the pattern. So it's not like move a little right and you boom, you fall way left with the ball guy line and set up. A little bit of backspin here and a little bit of side spin to the right as well to aim directly to the pin here. And then we adjust for medium distance with a 20% over adjustment. We unfortunately hit great left, but that will mean that the ball is gonna be pushed more to the right. So actually with a perfect, we would be going more straight, but as we hit great left, we hit that little slope on the left that push us more right. So in the end, a perfect ball would have been super duper close. This is, in my opinion, the absolute tough part three that we do have in this tournament due to its very inconsistent fairway and the, the problem with for us to find a consistent landing spot all the time. But do your best because there is a chance and you know, this could be a really big bonus if you drop on hole in one here on hole number seven. For hole number 8 we have another par 4 where we're actually going to go for green. So 4.5 bar topspin which is the maximum amount of topspin we can have on an extra mile level 5 and 4.5 bar side spin to the right. I play with a power 3 ball as I do need that one to get this ball to the green or very close to it. Unfortunately, I don't li like, unfortunately we need to play with max overpower. I don't like to suggest that but in this scenario we absolutely need to because in the end, if you hit great left, great right, you might roll into the rough here in the end, but you will still have a decent chance making an eagle from distance. But hitting this ball good, like a perfect ball or very close to perfect with a very minor great, you're going to see yourself being very close to the green or might be on the green as we are here. And that's a major reward for the risk that we are taking. So I think that the reward kind of trumps uh, the, the way that the risk is. So go for it, try to get to green, try to get close. Those of you having a driver with more top spin, like for example, six bars, seven bars, eight bars of top spin, but still have the same distance as extra mile, maybe reduce the overpower a little bit. There is also for those of you having, let's say a berserker ball, which is a power five ball, or you maybe have bought some power four balls. You can use those balls as well, but have in mind, if you're using a ball that is not power three, 
and is a power 4 or a power 5, you most likely need to reduce the overpower so you do not go too far. And that's going to be the tricky part for hole 8. But if you do make it correctly, you're gonna see yourself doing an eagle here more time than not. Last but not least, we do have hole number 9, and here we play with Big Topper once again. Doesn't matter if you have it in level 1 or you have it in level 8, then you still play with the Big Topper. Max top spin, one bar to the left, and then we're going to adjust for a maximum distance with a 10% over adjustment. Once you have done that, you push up your target into max, and then it's time to go with overpower. And yes, overpower is tricky, but be very focused, you can hit great left or great right, you will still be fine. You can see I hit this one very badly, great to the right, and I will still be ending up on the fairway. The thing that we do have here is that we are trying to get this ball as close to the green, but at least into a range where we do play with our short iron. Because with the big topper, that makes us have a lot of topspin, and then we can reach very far. You can go with max overpower with your drive, but I would try to go with at least, uh, like with maximum 50 to 75 percent of overpower the reason i want us to not go with 100 percent is because big topper is a tough club it has a very bad accuracy and if we hit great we are going to fly way more left way more right than normal so if you do go max overpower that will reduce the chance for you to hit that ball good so in the end we make sure that we get over the rough and uh, we are landing here for our opportunity with a short iron from distance. Unfortunately, I'm using a little bit too much backspin. I'm using two bars instead of using one bar, which I should, and we'll go short in line. 10% over adjustment is what I'm going for for the second shot here as well. Good chance, good chance for an albatross. Thank you so much for watching this playthrough for Rookie Division for the Community Cup in Gold Clash the game. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel before you go and I do believe we're going to see a lot of low scores here. Be focused, key holes is going to be hole number 2, hole number 8. Those two par 4s you kind of need to get the eagle on every single time to have a chance to uh, score well in this tournament. In the end make sure you comment in the comment section below if you do have any questions. Join our Discord, link to Discord is in the description down below. There you can uh, interact directly with me and other uh, players to help you out in your tournament journey. Last but not least, get the Ultimate Tournament text guides on Patreon. Those will definitely help you reach the goal that you are looking for. The video is sponsored by Gold Clash and Playdemic. Thank you so much for watching and good luck in the Community Cup.